Rotura Quest. Okay, an important part of style is creating a citation, a bibliography page. Because most of, your pe most of the people you'll deal with are going to want to find your information when you're done. So how do you do that? How do you go about creating a bibliography page? Well, it used to be a really difficult thing. And sometimes it can still be. Uh, sometimes it's really difficult. But right now, uh, we have some amazing tools available to us. One of the tools that I like to use is Son of a Citation Machine. And Son of a Citation Machine is great uh, because it can help you create citation formats. It's got MLA, uh, which I like, APA, which most people in my discipline use, Turabian and Chicago are all available. And so this can be really, really helpful. Sometimes you can even just go ahead and put the ISBN of your book in there. And sometimes it'll show up with the complete citation once you're done with that. I've actually only had that work once or twice. But even if you don't, if it doesn't work, there are other ways of looking up the book. Okay. Let's imagine that we had gotten some information uh, when we were searching and we had found this book and we had wanted to, to check it out and it was All Dog Breeds of the World by Bonnie Wilcox and Chris Walkowitz. And we wanted to go ahead and cite from this book. So, it looks like we have the bibliography information here. And a lot of times this is a good idea when you're working on a book, uh, working with a book and trying to decide and you check it out from the library, to go ahead and print out the bibliographic information before you get it, because sometimes that can help you find it. Most of this information will all be in the front of your book in the first few pages anyway. But anyway, we have two authors. So we're going to go ahead and I am going to create this citation in MLA. You can use MLA or APA and there are some big differences between the two but either way uh, you can use Son of a Citation Machine to do it. Okay this has two authors so we want both authors and we will what I'll do is I will just uh, her name is Bonnie Wilcox so we'll go author one is Wilcox E O N N I E, and his name is Walkowitz, and I'm just worried that I would misspell that if I tried to, uh, but Walkowitz. Okay, so it's W A L K O W I C Z. Oops, that's X Z, and his first name was, what was his first name? Chris. You'd think I could have remembered that for that long. The title of the work was Atlas of Dog Braids of the World. And I just go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. So I'm going to control C and paste it into Son of a Citation Machine. Um, apparently there's only, this is either the first edition or there were no further editions of this book because it doesn't tell me what edition it is. And so the next thing we need is volume number. This one doesn't have a volume number. Publishing city, there is always a publishing city. This one was published in Neptune, New Jersey. So we'll want to put that in, Neptune, New Jersey. And the name of the publisher was THF, uh, excuse me, TFH Publications. So we would put that in there. The year it was published, I remember, it was 1989. And it had, uh, now a page number, you actually only put the page number in if you're only citing from a few books. This book is a book in print. So I hit submit. And this gives me this, which is how I would cite this in the MLA style. So I can just copy it and then I can go to my writer my and put it into my bibliography. Oh, okay. Probably don't want to do that because that puts it a center. Okay, now you see this isn't quite lining up. It's really easy on OpenOffice to fix that. 
you just do it like this and it makes it all fit. You move the bottom one over and sometimes it catches the top one. You can always move it back if it does. Uh, that also works on uh, on Microsoft Word, you do have to put in there, you'll have to set, click on View and View Ruler. And once you view the ruler, then you can do that there too. So we've got an item in our, in our what well, we're using. Uh, we're using MLA, and MLA says that we call this a Works Cited page. And so we've already got one thing done. Okay, so that's how we do that. Sometimes we'll want to quote from a scholarly journal. Now a lot of scholarly journals, uh, when you get them from your research databases, will have a view citation. But the citation is not a citation in a format where you can just cut and paste it. Uh, but there is a lot of information here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead, we're going to go back to Son of a Citation Machine, and we are going to put down journal articles. And the author of this article we can look at it again. It was uh, Mari C. Flan Mara C. Flannery. So her last name was. And I always go ahead, and if they put their last name or their middle initial like she did, how did she spell it? M A U R A. I go ahead and put it in too, and I think that's proper for MLA. Uh, the title of the article uh, that I was looking at was Dogs and Humans. So I can go ahead and paste that into Son of a Citation Machine. The title of the publication is the American biology teacher and I can just go ahead and click that into Son of a Citation Machine and it is volume 7 issue uh, volume 69 issue 7 so I can get 69 and 7 the year it was published was 2007 so I can go ahead and do that. And it will have, be on particular page numbers 422 through 425. Okay, I'm actually looking at this online. Uh, so I probably should have chosen it over here, online journal article. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and say it was in print. Uh, so this is this is the case, Flannery, Mara, Dogs and Humans, and then I can copy that, go over to my writer, and paste it. But that's actually wrong, because see, in MLA, you have to alphabetize by author's last name. So we go ahead and take that out, and F comes before W. So here we have our we have two works cited for our works cited page in the MLA format. This also works for APA, it works the same, and there's also all kinds of things. Uh, let's go to a web document. And let's say that I was looking at, at, um, at this one, this is Common Health Problems for Chihuahuas, uh, that we talked about once before when we were doing our research part. And I can see this, and I look through, and I read this article, and I just don't see. I even go to the About Us, and, okay, About Us, it's Cheryl and Karen Dane. So that is probably the authors of this, unless I see another author on the page, uh, but I don't. So that's two authors, right, that we saw when we went to the, I'm going to go ahead and kill that, so we're not going to go back to it that we saw in the common health problems there were two authors and those were D A H N D D A E H N. Well go ahead and do that. And that was actually the last name of both the authors. 
and the I've already used that the Cheryl and Karen. Let's see, how did they spell that again? K-A-R-I-N. Oops. Okay, and the title of the page that I was citing from was Health Problems. And actually, you can see it, Health Problems in the Chihuahua. And the title is always up here at the top of the page from, on your browser. So Health Problems in the Chihuahua. So that's what I'd want to put in. Okay, the title of the website was a little different. The title of the website was Picasso Chihuahuas. Okay, the date that I was looking at it, and that's, uh, let, let's see if it's got a date on here. Uh, the date, sometimes it'll show the date down at the bottom, and if it doesn't, you don't worry about it if it doesn't show the date. So we don't know that, but we do know the, we don't know the publishing organization or if there is one. We do know the date retrieved was today, and we do know the URL. The URL is right here. Just copy it and paste it. And then here we go. Here we've got a, another citation for our works cited page. We know that started with D and D comes before F, so it's going to go first. Okay, so we've already got three citations for our works cited page. Uh, and we have another one common misperceptions about chihuahuas on chihuahua fanatics. So that's pretty much the same one and since, since I'm doing basically the same thing. Uh, now this one I looked on here and it does have an author, Jessica Blakely. But just to pretend, we're going to pretend that this one had no author because a lot of times on a web page we'll find one with no author. And so when that's the case, we just don't put in an author's name. And I would just say common misconceptions about chihuahuas. This is the title of the article. The title of the website was Chihuahua Fanatics. Uh, date published, that may actually be on there. Okay, it's a blog, so a lot of times blogs really do have that on there. But I don't see it on there, so I won't worry about it again. Uh, date retrieved is right there from the web, and then you always put in the URL. And paste that on there. And there we go. There's another one. Now here's the thing. Since we're pretending that one didn't have an author, what you do then is you just cite it using the first letter that actually does come up. So that would start there. And that's how you basically do a works cited page. And it's really important to do what? Uh, you do a works cited or, or references, it's called an APA. And it's really important to do one because that is what helps you uh, helps people find your stuff when it's over. So don't forget to do a works cited or bibliography page. And I'm not going to save this one because I'm not really doing that research. So that gives you some simple tools dealing with simple citation. But how should you cite something orally? Well really the way I see it you have two choices. On one hand you can do exactly like you would do if it was an in-text citation. So you can say, Mary, 
H239, if you were using the MLA method, or Frank et al., 1999. Okay, that's, a, that's an option. But, you know, I feel like, and this is my opinion, and so, if you're if you're using this for a uh, speech class for Western New Mexico University where I teach, my opinion is the most important. If you're just getting some general ideas of this and you go somewhere else, listen to your instructor and see what he or she says. But in my opinion, that can interrupt the flow of your dialogue. So here's what I think we should do. I think when you want to cite something out loud, in your speech, what you should do is tell who somebody is, and if it's not just an incredibly famous person, you know, if you Gandhi said it, we don't need to say anything more. Gandhi said it. We say who something is and why we should believe them. There might be a lot of reasons we should believe somebody. Maybe they got their degrees from a prestigious university, or they're teaching at a prestigious university. That would be one way of doing it. That would be one way of figuring out. So you could say, uh, Professor Hottentot, uh, Professor of uh, Language Arts at Harvard. I don't even know if Harvard has a language arts program exactly. Uh, you could say that and put it in there, and, and then well, we believe him, because he's a professor at Harvard. Or maybe. So-and-so said in their article in the New York Times, well, the New York Times has a certain amount of prestige. If that's where it was published, it might be believable. So who somebody is and why they're believable are what I think should go into an oral citation. Different people have different points of views on that. So, you know, like I said, that's my opinion from my point of view as to how I think it should be done. I recommend, if you're going to be giving a speech for class, that you talk to your instructor about what you think she or he thinks you should do. But, as far as I'm concerned, I think a good citation is who said it and why we should believe them. And I think if you do that, you're going to be doing okay. So that finishes up our section on style. We have covered invention, arrangement, memory, excuse me, invention, or deliver, delivery, arrangement, and style. All we've got left is the canon of memory. And I've saved that for last because I think that it's very important that there are so many tools and ways that we can remember speeches right now. I wanted to get that in before the end, and we'll talk about that. I may continue the lectures after that. I'm really enjoying making these videos, and I might talk about communication beyond just our public speaking. Talk a little, make a couple of videos about communication and relationships, and uh, I'm thinking I might make a couple of videos about group communication, organizational communication, and maybe a video about communication in the media. So. Here it goes. I, I'm, I'm really enjoying this. We're about to finish up uh, the style, which will, uh, we, we just finished up the style, and we're about to go into the canon of memory.